Hi, my name is Mike and I'm one of the internal education consultants here at The Profs. Um, I absolutely love working as a tutor, both in tuition and consultancy. I've been doing it for many, many years um, as I've been studying four different degrees, um, one from the University of Exeter, the University of Cambridge, in fact, and two postgraduate degrees at the University of Warwick, all based around mathematics and the sciences. So I'm incredibly passionate when it comes to helping people get onto their desired courses. So it gives me great pleasure to be able to talk today about how to get onto an undergraduate course in biology at the University of Oxford. Now, with Oxford being so prestigious, one of the, in fact, the oldest, I believe, university in the UK, um, the admissions rate isn't particularly high as uh, other universities. In fact, in the 2023 cycle, um, it was around about 15% of candidates that applied managed to get onto the course. Not a particularly promising number. However, at the Profs, we have an amazing track record with Oxbridge applicants. Um, that actually increases your chances of getting enrolled onto, uh, onto such a course by at least three times as much. So if you like what you hear or see in this video, then please go into the, the description below, get in contact with us either via our website or give us a call, or even like and subscribe this video and share it to someone who might be interested. Um, and my top five tips of getting onto this course uh, let's start with tip number one. And this is something that I would like to be able to say with every single Oxbridge course, if I could, make sure you know exactly what you're getting yourself in for. I've had quite a lot of people in the past who say they want to go for Oxford, but don't really know anything about the rigor of the course, about what is involved. Um, they mainly want to go there because they imagine it's almost like going to Hogwarts um, for university. Um, whilst it is pretty and it is an amazing achievement to be able to do, it is heavily rigorous. Um, it is very prestigious for a reason. They have an incredibly good track record of getting people into employment afterwards, as well as further education um, or sort of professional academia after they finish their degree. So make sure you're not one of those people who just wants to be able to get the Oxford badge. Make sure you're going for the right reasons. Um, and that involves doing your course research. Know what sort of topics are coming up within the degree. Um, and that brings me on to my second point. Make sure you know all of the stages of the admissions process. So with every single Oxbridge course, you're obviously going to be writing a UCAS application if you're going in for an undergraduate degree that involves writing a personal statement and a CV. And in terms of how we get those right, we offer a lot of services in terms of actually what to include with an Oxbridge application. One reason why we should have a look at our services and see how we can help you further. But that's a video for another time. Around that, we've got our interviews. And for biology at Oxford, you're at least going to have one interview, most likely, on your mathematical ability, and maybe one or two um, interviews on your understanding of biology. The number uh, of interviews that you're gonna have or the specificity of those interviews are gonna differ depending on whether you've had a particular college in mind or not. Um, but generally speaking, as a rule of thumb, it's best to prepare for both of those areas. Um, it's impossible really to go into a science degree at Oxford without having a natural aptitude for mathematics. So if you are not actually studying mathematics at the moment, make sure you try to at least get yourself on board with an A-level maths textbook. Read over that syllabus a little bit just to get yourself up to date with that side of things. Now, my third tip, again, that I say with every Oxbridge course, but this is so important given that the majority of your, of your personal statement is going to be to do with your academic interest in the subject, is make sure you demonstrate wherever you can actually how and why you love the subject. And there are multiple different ways that we could do this for Oxford, but all of which I recommend you start looking into early. So one of those ways is getting to your academic reading. With every single um, course that they offer, they do give a recommended reading list. If you're worried about actually where do you start in terms of what books to read, 
Um, but generally speaking, what you don't want to do is leave it all the way to September or October, perhaps, and actually find out that you've not read any books whatsoever. Um, <laughs> and you, last minute, only decide to read maybe the first chapter or the blurb. Now, that doesn't come across well. If you're lucky enough to get into an interview, you may be asked about your academic reading in a bit more detail, or you may be asked questions surrounding those topics. Um, so you do want to make sure that what you've read, you do have an awareness of it or an understanding of it. You don't need to know it fully inside and out, but one thing you cannot do is blab your way through reading. So please do start this uh, at the very least after you finish year 12, before going into that summer period where it's a bit quieter, um, before you actually engage um, with most of your time getting that UCAS application perfect. Now, another thing I would recommend you doing is go and look at public access talks that universities sometimes might offer. Um, sometimes even just saying that you visited, uh, say, like um, certain museums to further your understanding of, the, of, of biology. Uh, like, for instance, maybe you say that you actually went to the Natural History Museum and you went to talk about dinosaurs, um, like, for instance, and the biology of how that evolved over time. That's a fantastic talking point to be able to demonstrate your understanding of biology beyond what you're taught in school. So if there are opportunities for you to engage in something open like that, maybe it is a conference, maybe it is an article, uh, maybe even it is actually going for a summer school and studying biology there where you're developing your understanding of it. Do talk about it. With some of these things, they do come with a price tag. But depending on what your budget is, all any of these things can come across as a very, very good investment as part of your application uh, for Oxford to study a course like this. And um, also, we cannot really talk about Oxford without talking about competitions. Oxford is one of the most uh, competitive places, naturally, not just in uh, sort of like the academic subjects, but also in your extracurriculars. So maybe as an extra point, if you do have a massive achievement in sport or music you would like to discuss um, and you have an award perhaps that goes with that, do mention that as part of your application. That always goes well. But one thing that I would um, definitely look into is biology competitions. If there are any available to you um, at school, uh, definitely, definitely ask about them, especially if they're at least on a national level. If not, take a look online, see what is available, um, take it, perhaps a look at the, uh, the biology Olympiad, or at least this country's version of it. What happens there is that even if you were to give that a go, you get exposure to some really interesting problems that perhaps you might well be asked in your interview, or at least in a similar style of. Um, and that also exposes you to, at the very least, what it means to think critically as a biologist. And that is a really key, key skill that I want to be able to see. Moving on to my next point, uh, it's a really interesting one. And this is if you've actually done some really good work in getting your uh, UCAS application strong, is make sure as soon as you find out um, actually when your interviews are and who is interviewing you, that you try to do, if you can, a little bit of research into common interests. Now, this helps if you can perhaps create some common talking points with who you are having an academic discussion with. So for example, if the person interviewing you is really, really passionate about zoology, um, do a little bit of reading on zoology yourself. Maybe use that as an experience to be able to ask a question to further your interest in the subject. That goes a really long way and it leaves a really good lasting impression with the person interviewing you that actually you would fit very, very well in Oxford's tutorial scheme um, where you are working one-on-one -on -one or sometimes with two students with one professor uh, within a college uh, asking similar questions of the like. Um, so it's really, really cool if you can find a way to facilitate these academic conversations, do make sure to do so by looking into who is going to be interviewing you in those uh, interviews. Uh, another tip that I will be giving you to you today, and this is something I have to give with every single Oxford application, almost, if I could, um, is make sure you have a robust five-year career plan. The reason why we say five 
is because I don't just want to know what you're immediately going to try to do after your degree um, if you're not going into professional academia just so that you can still pay enough for rent if you're living on your own. Um, what I want to know is what is your dream ambition? What profession do you want to be able to uh, have in the future? Um, and that requires a lot of planning. It's not something you have to stick to so, uh, incredibly rigidly, but it's really, really good if we have an idea of that, that we can include in the personal statement. Oxford is really, really uh, special as part of their admissions process that uh, for biology, uh, is one of the few courses at Oxford where it doesn't have a separate admissions test, but you will still probably be asked similar questions, actually, to an admissions test in an interview setting. So do make sure that you are looking into biology beyond your school curriculum, maybe looking at some example competition questions, perhaps to give you some inspiration to think, get you to think critically about what it is that you are engaging with. Make sure that you are doing that in lieu of the fact that you don't have an admissions test, but you probably still will be asked similar questions, so do not be fooled. We still want you to prepare for these kinds of things as if you did have an admissions test. Uh, so this is a, another great way specifically at getting ready for those interviews. And then my final top tip at getting onto this particular course is make sure that you get in touch with an Oxbridge tutor. Now, not all schools offer a service in getting you ready for Oxford or Cambridge. Uh, there are several people here at the Profs, though, that can help you specifically with biology. If you're struggling to know, again, what kind of readings you need to be able to do, uh, we have a really, really good team of um, Oxbridge graduates that can actually help you on the consultancy team that can give you some really strong recommendations. Um, they can also help you with the UCAS application as well as the interviews, or even you can go to the tuition team maybe to get some additional help with uh, your A-level studies, or perhaps if you are getting ready for a biology competition of your own choosing, we can help with that as well. So we offer an extensive, varied team of specialists to be able to help you with every single aspect of your Oxbridge application. Please don't miss out on our services. We really wanna help you in whatever way we can. If you are looking at getting onto this course, why not give this video a like and subscribe? Um, if you have any further questions, do feel to post something down into our comment section. We'd love to hear from you if possible. Um, but if you would like to talk to us directly in person, you can call us via the number on the screen right now, or you can go into the link in the description below to find out more about our services. Um, but until we hear from you further, best of luck with your application.